Karen. Our reading today is taken from Genesis 6, verses 9 to 14. 9 to 14. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God, as Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark, and cover it inside and outside with pitch. I'm sure that most of you listening today uh, will know the story of Noah. There are certain things I'm sure that you can recall or remember in it, such as the ark that Noah made with God's clear instructions, the animals that went into the ark, the great flood that covered the earth, and the rainbow that God put in the sky. Well, when it comes to rainbows, we see lots of them today because people are t using the rainbow as a symbol of hope for the future and to thank the NHS for all that they are doing. And I'm sure that we all appreciate the marvellous work they carry out, especially at this time. And those two that are working in care homes and other key workers, it's wonderful, isn't it? And I think that we see those rainbows going up everywhere. I think most windows have a picture of a rainbow. I know that there's one in my window. Well, I don't want to detract from that in any way, but I want to talk to you just for a little while about God's rainbow, his promise of hope to the world. Yes, people are taking the rainbow as a logo of hope for the future, but God did that long ago after the great flood. It was there in the clouds as a covenant or a promise of God. For the world at that time had become corrupt and the earth was filled with violence and man's wickedness was great and the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, God said. And God was grieved and sorrowful. For when God made the world, he looked at everything that he had made and he pronounced it very good. But sin had marred his creation, and it seemed that mankind was heading towards self-destruction. God's sorrow wasn't that he'd made a mistake, because God doesn't make mistakes, but God had given man the freedom to choose between right and wrong, and he was grieved to see how far mankind had fallen from what he originally intended. But although God pronounced judgment upon humanity at that time, yet in the midst of judgment, we see mercy, the mercy of God, because he gave the people of Noah's time that uh, space of time to repent of their sinful ways. A hundred and twenty years, in fact. And during those years, Noah wasn't just building an ark, he was also warning the people of coming judgment. 2 Peter 2 tells us that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. God said about Noah that he was blameless and that he was righteous among the people of his time. By his character and reputation, and by practice, Noah was set apart from his generation. God said, I have seen that you have been righteous before me in this generation. He walked with God. He was aware of God's presence, listening to God, and he was obedient to him. Now there's a verse in the Bible that says, The eye of the Lord runs to and fro throughout the whole earth, that he might show himself strong on the behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him. And you know, that is what God, I believe, saw in 
Noah when he looked at Noah, a heart that was loyal to him, in the midst of the wickedness all around him. I wonder, dear Christian friends, are we serving God as Noah did in this our day and generation, in this broken world in which we live? For we live, if we're honest, in a world that is very much like that of Noah's, where there was violence and corruption and evil and wickedness. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? And remember this, Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man, because Jesus is coming again. When Noah and his family and all the animals were safe there in the ark, there was still room for people to go in through that door and be saved from the flood. The Bible says when everything was ready, the ark stood for seven more days before God shut the door. Seven more days of mercy. Seven more days when they had the opportunity to enter the ark. And I'm sure that Noah preached from the doorway of that ark, imploring people to come in and be saved. Noah's ark is a picture to us of salvation in Christ. He is the door through which we need to come and be saved. In John 10 and verse 9, Jesus said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he shall be saved. You may be asked, well, saved from what? Well, from our sin, from God's coming judgment upon sin. The Bible tells us that it is appointed unto man once to die and after death the judgment. But friends, God has made a place of refuge. It is in his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He took the penalty of our sin there at Calvary and the punishment. And today there is room at the cross for you if you would come and be saved. There is something we note in the story of Noah. It is that God called Noah, it says, into the ark. And when the flood was abated, he said to Noah, go out of the ark, which would imply that God had been with him all the time. And I thought, what a comforting thought it is, because it speaks to us that God is with us in all our trials, in all our storms, in all our difficulties. He will be with us if we look to him. And even through what we're experiencing right now as a nation, the Bible tells us that God is an ever-present help. That's his wonderful name. Now the first thing that Noah did when he alighted out of the ark was to build an altar unto God and there he made a sacrifice to God. He wanted, I'm sure, to thank God for keeping them and preserving them through the flood. And God was pleased with Noah's sacrifice. And God said to Noah, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night, shall not cease. God's covenant or promise wasn't just to Noah, but he said, I establish my covenant with you and all your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the cattle, the beasts on the earth, all that go out of the ark, never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. This is the sign of the covenant I make between me and you and every living creature. I set my bow, my rainbow in the sky. And when I see the rainbow, I will remember my covenant, my everlasting covenant between me and the earth. God said, I will see it and I will remember. I don't think that God needs to be reminded. He is ever mindful of his promises. The Bible says in him 
the promises of God are yea, are yes, and amen. God says, but this is my covenant. This is my rainbow. And friends, not one will fail of all God's promises. But one day, that rainbow that we see in the sky, which we see here on earth, we will see for the last time. One day, we're all going to see another rainbow. But that one will be in heaven, and it's around God's throne. The Apostle John was transported by the Spirit to heaven, and there he sees a throne, and sat on the throne is God. And there around the throne of God was a rainbow. In appearance it says like an emerald. It was around the throne. And you may or you may not be surprised to know that a rainbow is actually a full circle. The rainbow we see is partly blocked by the horizon. So we just see the arc. To see one in all its splendour, you would have to find a high vantage point. Some people looking from planes or maybe skydiving have seen this amazing phenomenon. If you go to Google and write in rainbow, you can see it. As I thought, I know about that rainbow, that it was around God's throne. It reminded me uh, that God is a covenant keeping God. A God who keeps his promise. You know, sometimes we find it hard, don't we, to keep a promise. But God's promise to Noah still stands. Never again would there be a flood to destroy the earth, which was God's judgment upon sin. But as I mentioned earlier, we see too the mercy of God in providing an ark for their salvation. Sadly, the people of Noah's time never took the opportunity to enter the ark of refuge and be saved. But as I think of that rainbow, I see too the final judgment day, for we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. But yet again, God has provided a refuge, not in an ark, but in his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who took the punishment of our sins there upon the cross of Calvary. But we have to take advantage of that refuge now, while we're in time and out of eternity. The hymn writer says, His oath, his covenant, his blood supports me in the whelming flood. And in that overwhelming flood of God's wrath upon sin, we have a refuge in Jesus Christ. You remember when Jesus took up the cup at the Last Supper, he said, This is the new covenant in my blood. And in this new covenant, God has pledged to forgive the sins of those who put their trust in his Son. When you see those rainbows, or a rainbow in the sky, remember this promise that God has made to you and to all mankind. And I pray you will put your trust in him. Be safe in the ark of God's refuge. And I pray that today you might know his wonderful salvation.